Koto, Ko Stephanie Taylor, Toko Wingawa. Uh, thanks, Alistair, and thank you, Jeff. I actually wrote the speech uh, a couple of weeks ago um, with the aim to share with our ministers as they set to make uh, the major changes to our health system. But unfortunately, the ministers were unable to give general practitioners 10 minutes of their time during this pandemic, which sadly, I think, speaks volumes. But to those GPs that were able to uh, draw themselves away from their clinics and uh, watch us today, I'm probably preaching to the converted because we all know the amazing job that we do every day. However, I think it's well overdue that we speak up about our achievements and there's a chance to be heard uh, and make changes to our health system so that we can ensure that gym practice is sustainable in the future. We must also ensure, I think now more than ever, that we make others realize our value before it's just too late. Some of you may be old enough to remember when we were valued and appreciated. We were valued by our community, we were valued by our hospital colleagues, valued by the government, and we used to be appreciated enough that recruiting for our workforce was not a challenge. We know it's our job to care for patients and we know there's no greater joy than saving a life. Every day we listen to our patients, we give advice, we advocate on their behalf, and we have a dramatic impact on, on our patients. This impact can indeed be life-changing. I'm sure John will tell us his experience with this later. Uh, we all know that having a GP who has cared for us for many years, if not decades, means that we actually know our patients like family. Um, and Jeff has shown us this today. This continuity of care is really priceless. I've got to also say that it's pretty cool to be sharing this platform uh, with Jeff Lowe today because over 20 years ago, he was actually, um, I was his registrar, he was my supervisor. Uh, so he must've taught me something, right? Uh, the challenges. So uh, we know that this past year has been hugely challenging for general practice. Uh, G GPs were beginning to feel demoralized. And I think that this latest outbreak has some of us reaching our limits. We've seen significant changes to our clinics and in fact, the whole health sector. But it was us, as we've done before, that had to pivot almost overnight in this recent pandemic. We have virtual consults. I'm still wearing my scrubs and was down in my clinic this morning for, uh, doing swabbing. We created these receptions in our car parks. Uh, basically, we did this because our patients needed us. And we did this because otherwise they wouldn't be able to access care. But after years of underfunding, our practices were already under immense strain. With no co-payments coming into our clinics at the moment, I know some smaller clinics are soon going to have to close their doors as we will not be able to sustain, sustain this hit financially. The payments for swabs in our DHB here in Auckland take several months to come through. And they've already actually told us they're going to reduce our pay rates on it, claiming for our swabs just in the last week. So I ask, does anyone at the government level actually realise that practices are being told to keep our doors open, but as small businesses, this is not sustainable for some clinics? Remember that other essential services that are open, like pharmacies, supermarkets, service stations, they are doing roaring trades because they have the income coming in. But primary care is in a desperate situation regarding sustainability. And this is on top of the numerous hours that we spend doing unpaid paperwork. And it is actually taking its toll on our workforce. Then on top of the workforce issues, we all know that we have an ever increasing number of declined referrals from secondary care. In the last few weeks, many of us would have had a patient that was kicked out of hospital too early, leaving us to manage them. And we manage them with our limited resources. I mean, how can I be a specialist but not be able to request a CT scan for some of my patients? So I know it's all sounding doom and gloom and these are just some of the challenges that I think uh, we need to have changed. And that's really my reason for speaking. Despite uh, the exceptional demands placed on us, we are fortunate to have GPs that have really put in the, the mahi, mahi and getting the job done. Um, but I would say that we are all feeling the strain. And if we are not better recognised as the specialists we are and better supported, it is actually going to be our patients, our communities, and indeed our country that I believe will suffer. I was going to leave you with a video image of what the world would be like without GPs in it. But instead, I wanted to tell you what is currently happening in my waiting room. I'm here in central Auckland, ground zero, 
for this pandemic and my waiting room is empty. The practice has a nurse who is waiting. We have a large vaccine fridge waiting. It has seating laid out two meters apart, but it sits empty, waiting to be approved to be able to give COVID vaccinations. So today, I had planned to tell the minister that we wanted one thing to change, but they didn't show up. I do, however, want to thank Dr. Matheson and Mr. Hibbert who have kindly given up their time today. And we ask, we ask that you let us as doctors and our practices do the work that we're actually trained and ready to do. Show us our value and listen. Let us help our patients and our community. In fact, let us help our nation. Give us the approval to do COVID vaccinations. This will save lives. Not next week, not next month. This may be too late for some. We ask that you give us approval to do these vaccines as a nation right now. My waiting room just shows New Zealand that some GPs are feeling unrecognized as the specialists in, that we are. We feel undervalued for the work that we are trained to do. So I ask, please change this and change it today. Thank you.